Uh, this is the fifth video in a row. So that's five videos at 15 minutes each. That's 50 minutes plus 25. That's an hour and 15 minutes. I've been just sitting here talking crap. I can't believe that there's not a law against polluting the internet. <laughs> Absolute crap. The thing is, we're about getting into the time machine and going back in time, but we've got to do things in advance. So we are into, I, I want to stay on the theme of Dutch actually, because um, I don't actually have anything else to talk about, I just don't feel like stopping talking. I wonder if that's something that is like typical on YouTube, where the people are swimming or something like that, people are talking for perhaps the same reason. Because I had some friends, I just had some friends, I sometimes talk to my friend friends, but they never talk back. So yeah. Let's see. The thing is, I reckon <laughs> stimulating the conversation I can have with, with anyone really. Um, most people don't have the colossal insight that I have on, on space, time, uh, and the sheer, you know, Existence of everything. I'm quite into. I know what I'm going to talk about. I want to talk about Dutch. I'm trying to talk about something else. I'm not very good at it. But, um, I tried not to let out my trade secrets, but I really like Kwa Glang Do for the ebooks. There's only three of them, I've got them all, and they're not easy to get either, and they're quite expensive. But, um, and the thing is, I'm not very good at it. I'm back, I'm rubbish at it, in fact, that about as much as I've done is to get the books. But, it's really interesting. I don't know why I got onto this, but it's, it's got all this stuff. Huarang Du techniques are found in four basic divisions of power. That was what I was talking about, my colossal insights into the universe. And this whole Huarang Du stuff is all about, a lot of it is all about how you think. And again, I don't need to do that, but I just feel as though I'm in the right place when I read these things. Um, on the four basic divisions of power, inner, outer, weapon, and mental. Aspects of each are taught to the student in stages as he progresses through his training. Part of do includes all forms of personal combat and mental development. It is a sphere of internal dynamics part of do that the principle of Qi and the indivisibility of Yang yang express themselves as the basics of power of the basis of power. It is within these internal dynamics that we discover the feeling of hardness and softness, linear and circular and the oscillation between tension and relaxation. Now, that to me is a martial art. That's what I like about this. In advanced study, Huang Du deals with mental disciplines. It is here that we enter into the realm of the four quadrants of the mind. Evolution through the upper stages of the quadrant permits the martial artist to control and direct life's vital force. Key. Now, I've tried this key stuff. Uh, I reckon I need to study a bit more. Mind is always primary in the mastery of Qi as an energy force when applied to techniques. It's just, I don't have time to actually do this. You know, you've got to sit down and it says sit down in a peaceful environment. Well, I don't think it's a peaceful environment in 20 years, but I don't know. It's one excuse after another. I'm just too busy and full of haste. But the point is, I want to, you know, and I am, and I'm doing it, really. you know, even just doing, even just chatting about it here is, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, sort of pretty, you know, just giving it a go. Nei Gong Inner Power, Nei Gong has to do with the training methods for developing key. I won't talk about that at the moment, because I want to get to this other bit. So it's talking about Nei Gong Inner Power, and then it's got Shingong, which are mental powers. Um, 
now. That's what I sort of want to get to. And we'll forget about this other stuff because it's got a lot of this. Um, it's got Wagon, which is out of power. Wagon relates to external trade links, and that's the shifting of the key, the key power from its centre to its extension. These are broken down into 21 separate subdivisions into which 4,000 individual techniques are organised. And it's got 4,000 techniques in the branch. Like it's massive. The thing is, a lot of them are secret. But what I keep coming back to is Xing Hong, Xing Gong, whatever, however you say it. Um, and there are eight parts to the Xing Gong. No, there are 13. I'll go through them because this is what I like about this martial art. It's amazing. I just uh, take it on the, on, basically, just going back to the, um, the Nei Gong. Nei Gong, inner power. Hui Gong, outer power. Um, Mu Qigong, which is weapon power. There are 108 different weapons in this martial arts, uh, based on eight different attack directions of attack. R and D divided the direction of attack into eight points of the compass. The long sword focuses attack on one point, top of the head and the side of the neck, against the body, you know, um, etc. etc. Doesn't really say much else. Shin Gong, mental power, both concerned with the mental control of ki. I haven't even really figured out. In your stomach somewhere, and you can focus it on the fibers of people. And that and um, something else that I'd spend a bit of time and put it out or save somewhere is psionics. I did a video on psionics the other day. Psionics is moving objects with your mind, and that's pretty phenomenal stuff. Um, and I had a go at it and said, I don't know what to do. And I still just don't, I sit down and then I want to go and do something else, so you don't have to move constantly to stop and it's working. It's, I'm just, it's like I'm a car and someone got a brick on the accelerator, I'm just too revved all the time. And I don't even care, I just want to go at all the time with a happy car, traveling at full rev, even if I'm not actually even going anywhere. But I'm fine with that. But this Shin Gong, Mental powers is directly concerned with the mental control of key and it's divi divided into various subdivisions. Doc Shim Sword, the power to read minds. It is, it is one form of telepathy. If I can learn Dick Shim Sword, I would be impressed. Uh, and in this book is essentially the ancient martial art of Hoang Du. It was this martial art has been in existence for hundreds of years, and it was only in the 60s when people figured out how to travel from one place to another that it was sort of brought to the West. You know, these are secrets from Korea and, um, and all that sort of Chinese type Asian sort of evolution of humanity. And uh, I think a lot of these concepts have been just crapped on by Western civilization. I'm not saying that these people are superior or I don't know, I'm making judgment. I'm just saying that number one, Doc Shim Saw, the power to read minds. I mean this is not a creepy martial art. This is they they think they can do things and I'm pretty sure that they can do things. I'm not sure oh, to read your mind. I don't think they have to do that. It's just understanding human psychology, body language you know, almost putting really simple building blocks together to read minds. Shin Ku Sol is the second form of telepathy and involves visualizations. It is a form of telepathy that visualizes movements of other people. Now, I mean, I've read through this before and all this stuff is really appeals to it. In Sol, the development and training in patience. I mean, I need that. You know, I just think, you know, if I can do this, Cho mind soul is a technique of putting a person to sleep. Cho mind soul, putting someone to sleep. I mean, what sort of martial art is this? Well, I could do that. You know, put someone to sleep. What do you do? You need to hit them on the head with a brick. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, this book does not tell you how to do it. That's it. The whole point of this thing is you're supposed to become a you're supposed to spend 20 years mastering the arts and then you like get to the it's like, it's like that pyramid selling thing where you've got to build your way up. There's no sort of go to page 25 for this. I mean, these are only the starters, they get better. Un, un Shin Bok 
is the art of concealing oneself in front of others and employs a combination of distraction, suggestion, stealth, and camouflage. Un shin bob. Concealing oneself. So you could sort of say, I'm about to conceal myself. Doing my ninja moves. And now you can't see me. That's because I'm a ninja. You can see how I just vanished. And that was through subtle concealment. Um, Sat Sang Bop is the study of human types. Human personalities and psychological characters are broken up into four basic types. There are two types of Yang and two types of Om. They imply a different approach to training of the mind. You see, we've got a lot of this stuff in like in Zen meditation and yoga and but when it came to when it comes to the West, it's like well, they've watered it down. They've taken out all the interesting stuff that allows you to kill people with it. I'm not saying they want to, but you know, it's like the whole idea of judo, it actually came from like jujitsu or something like jujitsu, I can't remember exactly what. But what happened in, in the proper in the original Now I don't even know where I am. Presumably you can still see me, but I can't see anything on this screen. I feel as though I, I, I don't know I am. I'm back. Like you, you leave your windows open, and then all of a sudden there's an advert. But um, I can't remember what I was saying now. But yeah, yeah, that's it. Judo. Judo was um, basically let's suppose it was Jiu-Jitsu. I'm not sure it was. I've got a book on it somewhere. I'm gonna do another one. I just love doing this. I rush through these. The judo, judo, they, they, they make judo and out of jiu-jitsu because if you do jiu-jitsu, you break people's arms just because of the way the throws are. They, they do have, they have things that you, you know. All you have to do is put someone's arm behind their back and do a throw. And if you don't do it properly, you break their arm or you dislocate their shoulder. And so they basically made judo. Which took out all the things that you could, if you didn't do them right, would accidentally damage someone permanently. And um, that's what this is. These are the proper ones, and they brought in yoga, which has got all the interesting stuff like putting people to sleep with your, you know, taken out. Cook up hal bop is the use of acupuncture to revive an injured person. Well, we've got that. You can go to do your Chinese acupuncture. Um, Chim Gu Su Bob is the use of acupuncture to cure disease. Brilliant, I have no complaints about that. Um, Yup Hol Sol is the study of setting bones that result from breaks and dislocation. So they're teaching how to, you know, how to do all this. And one of the, one of the premises of, um, Jiu Jitsu, which is sort of going into a little bit, um, I love all these martial arts. Let me just check that out. Akedo. Akedo. One of the principles of that is you don't harm anyone. You know, the first thing you do is heal them. All the, the whole art is about healing people. That's the thing. And then you do the art. And the combat is all about defending yourself, basically. That's all something else. But the next one, Ju Sol, the practice of chanting as a technique to heal or cause disease. Jutsu is the practice of chanting as a technique to cause disease. That's what this part is to cause disease, you disease, you know. Son hack. This is what gets me about this. I've only got a few seconds left. Son hack is the practice of hermitage, which I'm really good at. Because I never go out and I don't have any friends. I, uh, you know, the capacity to live alone for long periods of time in a highly evolved art. It is a highly evolved art. It's essential for the continued study of the infinite powers of the mind. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to focus on this again. 